Hey folks, Levi here once again. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed my review of Speed. I have not uploaded it yet, but I hope y'all still enjoy it. Well, I hope y'all do enjoy it. Anyway, I know I said I was going to be Cars next, but to be honest, uh, you know, I, I, I honestly not the biggest fan of that movie, so I mean, I thought it was alright, but I'm not going to really rush to review it. But anyway, I thought I, you know, kind of I guess I'm going to call this a random review as well, but also animated, since I said Disney Pixar animated reviews. Uh, this does add in because it's an animated film, it's not Disney or Pixar, but it's animated, so, you know, in those categories for me, those count. So, this definitely counts as an animated film, but anyway, um, this is a movie that, uh, you know, a direct video movie of this famous of a dog that has pretty much been famous around the world. He's been around since I think the 60s. Uh, he's been it was he was created by Hanna Barbera Productions. He's had many movies, live action movies, well, a couple of those, and uh, a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows based on him. And uh, well, you know what I'm talking about because we always hear about his snacks, and he always says his name when he's happy at the end, and we always hear, "If it wasn't for you." I would have gotten away with it too if you weren't for you meddling kids and your dumb dog or stupid dog, whatever they call it. But anyway, I'm talking about yes. I'm reviewing the 19 the director the first director video Scooby Doo film, and that is Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. Yes, this film came out in 1998. It was director video. So when it came out, it was just released on TV on Cartoon Network and um, excuse me um you know, VHS and, well, now DVD. I don't know if it's on Blu-ray, but it definitely deserves to be on Blu-ray. Um, yeah, but like, uh, but this movie, like, I, um, we'll go ahead and say right now, I did grow up watching Scooby-Doo as a kid. I remember the Jeepers Creepers episode. I watched that, you know, not too long ago. Again, I watched it sometime, way some time ago, but it's still funny to watch. Uh, you know, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? That is a classic TV series. Hannah Barber, you know, created it, and, like, other shows like The Flintstones, The Jetsons, Yogi Bear, you know, yeah, those shows were created by Hanna Barber Productions, and uh, probably you know, I say right now, Scooby Doo is definitely my favorite. You know, I love the Flintstones, but I like the Flintstones, but I love Scooby Doo a lot more. But that's just me, because he's been around for a very long time. You know, people like Scooby Doo because of the gang, and basically because of Scooby Doo himself, because he is the star, basically. We love Scooby-Doo because he's funny. He's a talking dog that, you know, can't really talk. I can't do Scooby-Doo voice. I, right? <laughs> I can't do Scooby-Doo voice. I'm, boy, Scoob. <laughs> like, I say, let's get out. <laughs> no, it's good. I can't do the voices. I, if you look up Tanashi's Movie Corner, there's one one of the, up channel, his YouTube channel. He does, he does the Scooby-Doo voice on one of his videos, so definitely check that out. <laughs> he does it better than me. I can't do the voice, right? I'm not a good, I'm not a voice actor. But anyway, I'm going to talk about the history of Scooby-Doo a little bit, and then the movie itself. Yeah, but uh, one thing I'll say about this movie right now, it is, you know, the original series definitely is for kids, and some Scooby-Doo is for kids, but this movie is not for children. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's bloody and gory. It is... Uh, this is not rated, so, but it is, you know, you do have real, you know, like, you see your real zombies in here, and the ending can be quite frightening, you know, a little bit, you know, can probably scare children, so, the film is dark, a little darker than the original series, so, I would say if, you know, parents, if you buy this for your kids, definitely watch it for them, watch it, I can see why they didn't probably put this movie in theaters, if they would have, then children probably would have been scared, and parents would have been complaining, I think that's what happened. I know it's not like a bit, it's not a regular film, but it feels like a PG movie, you know, because you you know there's some stuff in it that might scare children, you know, especially the zombies and stuff, because they are facing real zombies. It's not it's not just somebody that's wearing a mask and one of the usual mysteries. But anyway, let me tell you about the gang itself. You know, first you have Fred. Here, Fred, Fred Jones, who is the leader of the gang, you know. All right, gang, let's split up and search for clues. And then you have Daphne Blake, who is the, you know, danger-prone Daphne of the gang. Of the gang. She's danger-prone. She's she's gorgeous. You know, Daphne's always been beautiful. And she can also handle herself in a fight. 
<laughs> and the glamorous one. You know, the kind of the girly one of the group, basically. Then you have Vilma, right there. Vilma Dinkley. Jinkies, you know, who's the smart one of the group. Although, Fred's the leader, she's basically the one that loves us. She loves, Vilma, lo Vilma loves mysteries. She's always good at solving mysteries and stuff like that. And she's the smart one of the gang, you know, always coming up with a plan, basically. Well, not, well, usually it's Fred, I'm sorry, because he's the leader, but Vilma basically is able to smart, the smart one, you know, able to find out who the real ghost is, because she's very smart. Then you have Shaggy, Shaggy, Norville Shaggy Rogers, you know, but we just call him Shaggy, who was voiced by Casey Kasem in the original show, um, but um, Shaggy is the coward one of the group, he's always scared, doesn't want to get into a mystery or anything, he's afraid, you know, basically, he don't want to... <laughs> Him and Scooby, but, you know, Shaggy's basically the coward one out of the group. And then you have the dog of the game, which is Scooby-Doo, and he can be helpful. He can, you know, sniff around with his nose a little bit, you know, search for clues, and if they're looking for somebody, Scooby-Doo can sniff around. And sometimes Scooby-Doo, basically, at the end of the day, sometimes he and Shaggy, or Scooby himself, will run to the bag of bags and stop them by eventually because, for, you know, Fred's plans basically have Scooby and Shaggy always involving stopping the bag guys and they find out and they open up and, oh, Jinkies, Mr. Whiskers? Oh, boy. Yeah, this, the, the, you know, like, um, everyone standing around and be like, well, yeah, he hated it when the colony or whatever blah, the company was going to find him, so he turned himself into a monster to get revenge, to scare locals away, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's always the mystery solve, you know, like that. And then the bag was like, and I want to get away with it too, for real, for you meddling kids, and, you, and your stupid dog, Scooby Dooby Doo, you know. <laughs> That's all the way, you know, the way it would end, basically. Uh, but, yeah. And they're called the Mystery Ink, and the Mystery Ink Machine is definitely a great fan. I would love to drive in a van like that someday. You know, I know they probably have it at Warner Brothers Studios. I'm sure they have, like, a sh ex expeditions or something, exhibits of probably the car itself, which is pretty cool, which I'd like to see someday. You know. Alright, seven minutes in, I know. Even though this movie's only 77 minutes long, but this review is not going to be that long. Oh. Like I said, Scooby Doo became a big franchise, you know. Starting off with the show, you had a lot of other and you get a lot we have a lot of other director video movies. And then we got some new ones that are coming out, yeah. It started in 1968. Parents run, runs organizations, actions for children's rights, began to protest about what they perceived. I guess they had violence in Saturday morning cartoons and parents were complaining about it. So, yeah. Most of these shows were Hannah Barber action cartoons, The Space Ghost, The Hurts, Birdman, and The Galaxy Trio, and they were canceled by 1969 because of the pressure from the parent groups. Members of these watch group served as advisors to Hanna Barbara and other mission studios to ensure that their new programs would be safe for children. Fred Silverman, in charge of daytime program for the CBS Network at the time, was looking for a show that was starting Saturday morning cartoon. You know, it just talks about the history a little bit of Scooby Doo. The show called House of Mystery. Then they call him the Mystery Five. You know, something to do with supernatural creatures and, you know, having this gang and pretty much like that. You know, the Mystery Ink Gang. <laughs> they were going to make Scooby a sheepdog, but instead he's a, Scooby's a Great Dane. I guess they first called the show Who's Scared? Uh, they didn't really have a name for Scooby Doo at first, it was Dooby Bee Doo Bee Doo. <laughs> so they decided to change his name to Scooby Doo, and they called the show Scooby Doo Where Are You? 
and then the show was, you know, represented the CBS executives who approved for it. So, I guess at that time I wasn't alive, <laughs> but I guess there were some certain shows, and they decided to come up with, you know, a kid show that you know was about a Great Dane and his gang who solved mysteries of ghosts, creepy creatures, and stuff, zombies. The show ran from sixty nine to seventy five. And it made its, the CBS Network, it, start, it made its debut on September 13th, Saturday, September 13th, 1969, where its first episode, What a Night for a Night, I remember, yeah, that's what the episode was called, Jeepers, It's the Creeper, yeah. you know, then they had the new Scooby-Doo movies, and other stuff, you know, they came out in the 70s. You know, I love that new Scooby-Doo show, new Scooby-Doo uh, movies because I like the uh, song Scooby-Dooby-Doo, looking. You know, you know the original Scooby-Doo song. Yes, Scooby-Dooby-Doo, looking for you. Yeah, I'm thinking about another song. But Don Meskett was the voice for Scooby-Doo, and uh, this movie on Zombie Island is, uh, you know, pays respect to him because he passed away. Casey Kasem voice Shaggy Rogers. Frank Vogel voice Fred Jones. Stephanie, St Stephanie Christo Christopher voice Daphne Blake. Nicole Staff voice Velma Dinkley. Velma Dinkley. Scrappy, well, Scrappy Dude, which is Scooby's cousin, voice Lenny Wurmp, or his nephew, or whatever he was. And then some pictures of the mystery ink right there. Yeah. And Scooby Doo pretty much, you know, became, you know, the show became great. I guess it had a couple seasons. Then you had uh, the movies and stuff. And so Scooby Doo became a big franchise, you know, really, I think it was liked by people, you know. You know, they had, I'm sure, Scooby Snacks everywhere, Scooby Doo merchandise and stuff. Some comic books I'm reading about. Board games, coloring books, you know, storybooks, records, underwear, such goods, you know. Yeah. Just a lot of merchandising, breakfast cereal, action figures, toys, you know. And I'm sure, you know, the TV show gets a cult following now. <coughs> and I'm sure it's something hopefully parents, you know, show their kids nowadays. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that, you know, that were born in the 60s. I'm sure, I guarantee some of them, if you were born in the 60s, you probably did watch, you know, Scooby-Doo when you were little, you know. And still probably remember it. But yeah, Scooby-Doo, like I said, it became a hit, and they had some t more TV series, you know. I'm forgetting the song, you know. Hey! You know, I'm thinking of another song, you know. Scooby Dooby Doo, looking for you. You know, wouldn't have a show without you. I'm thinking about some other one. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? You got somewhere to be now. I'm thinking of the song. We can count on you. You know, Scooby Doo, we know we will catch that villain. I'm trying to remember, uh, Yeah, and it's gonna be doing. Where are you? You know. <laughs> but yeah, and then of course you had this film come out, and they have you know direct to video movies come out. They had a live action movie come out in two thousand two. Excuse me. And then they had you know Scooby Doo Two Months on the Island, Scooby Doo The Mystery Begins, Curse of the Scooby Doo Curse of the Lake Monster, the, the live action movies. You know. Which weren't so bad. I, you know, I'm gonna review the Scooby Doo 2002 film. But anyway, that movie's fun. Okay, but anyway, I'm off really off topic here. So let me talk about how this movie got made. But like I said, Scooby Doo, you know, became a hit. It became a cult classic. You know, well, classic. Excuse me. And then you have these mini, you know, director video animated films.
production started at Hanna Barber, but was then completed by then the new parent company, Warner Bros. Animation, which would produce all Sunday Scooby Doo films. It was also the first of four Scooby Doo directed video films to be animated overseas by Japanese animation studio Mook Emanation. The film was released direct to video, which means that it didn't go to the movie, the movie theater or whatever. Like I said before in the video, yeah, it wouldn't have worked, you know, if they did. And it premiered on Cartoon Network on October 31st, 1998, so on Halloween day, so, well. The film received critical acclaim for critics to praise the animation. Animation is good in this film. The voices and the writing, so, the, you know, and the you know, I do agree, agree with the critics here that does, the film does have good animation, voice, and direct and writing. It also does have a good story, you know, and it is original, so. <coughs> And the film also has, like I said, a much darker tone than the original series. Promotional commercials for the movie announced that this time the monsters are real. So I'm sure they had some marketing and stuff for the movie. The movie is dedicated to the mayor of Dumbesk, who voiced Scooby Doo in the original series. He died nearly a year before the film's release. This movie is also one of Ed Gilbert's final roles. The film's screenplay was written by Glenn Lippert of Nickelodeon's Doug. And David Stone, then a writer for Hannah Barber's production, Dexter's Laboratory. Doug, Dexter's Laboratory, I remember growing up watching those TV Hey, hey Arnold. There's a lot of TV shows I grew up watching when I was a little. You know, when I was a kid. The final script. After Don Maskus' death, Scott Lenz replaced Maskus as it was Scooby Doo. Casey Kasem did not respond as well as Shaggy Rogers. Due to him forcing Shaggy of the characters a vegetarian like he himself. He Instead, Billy West provided the voice of Shaggy. Casey Kasem, really, I mean, he does a great job, you know, as voicing Shaggy, <laughs> you know, Shaggy is not a vegetarian, <laughs> you know, I don't see why that is such a problem, but, alright, whatever, Mary Kay Bergman was cast as Daphne with a character who was taken into a new direction, B.J. Ward, who played Vilma in this Johnny Bravo crossover episode, responded well in this film, Frank Welker is the only actor from the original series to inspire his role. The film was directed by Jim Sturms, who worked as a character designer on numerous previous Scooby Doo productions beginning in nineteen eighty three with the new Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo show. Husk Ames Kamas Fishke directed the film as well, but are no credit in the picture. I cannot say their names right, sorry. This and the following three films had a darker tone than the original anime series since the monsters were real. The film was taken to the middle of dumb mess. Production started in Hannah Bobber, the company brought original Okay, I've already read some of that. Professional composer Steve Brinsman, also known for his controversy with the fellow composer Bruce Bogdan on projects such as Tiny Toon Adventures, Jag, Lost in Space, wrote all music for the future. The soundtrack for the film is great, you know, it's got three songs. The Ghost is here and it's Terror Time Again. Both written by Glenn Pront, performed by Skykel. The soundtrack Scooby Doo, Where Are You, was performed by Third Eye Blinded. The film was animated and presented in standard 1.3.1 photo frame format. And it was released on VHS September 22nd, 1998. No, I don't think the movie's on Blu ray. It's not, I'm reading about NASCAR here. It was promoted as part of Cartoon Network's Wacky Racing, a sponsorship deal with Merrill Racing in 1998 as a third point schemes. So I guess, you know, NASCAR, you know, sometimes NASCAR, they'll, you know, to market a movie to paint the car, like, with the movie's, you know, poster. So I'm, I guess they, you know, painted the movie on the car, on a race car, which is pretty cool to promote the film. And the film, you know, got more director video ones, which I'm also going to review those as well. So hopefully, you know, I've been looking for the Scooby Doo directed movies on TV, on you know, or you know, on a, well, on a kids channel, of course, because that's the only thing that'll come on. But um, yeah, hopefully that's what you know. I'll get to read Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost, and I'll continue with Scooby Doo animated films as well. Yeah. And the voice cast: Scott Ennis is Scooby Doo, Billy West is Shaggy Rogers, Mark Gray Bergman is Daphne Blake. Frank Wilker, Frank Wilker as Fred Jones, B.J. Ward as Roman Dinkley, Adrian Bond as Simone Lenore, Tara Charmley as Lena Debris, Cameron Clark as Detective by 
by Univille, Jim Cumming as Chuck, Mark Hamill as Snake by the Scrubs, Jennifer Lee Warren as Chris, Ed Gilbert as Mr. Beeman. Alright. It was directed by Jim Stumps, produced by Cosm Animation, written by Glenn Lubbert, produced by Stephen Bresman, and is based on characters created by Hanna Barber Productions. Produced by Stephen Bresman, is edited by Paul Douglas, production company's Warner Brother Animation, <coughs> Hanna Barber Productions, it's distributed by Warner Brother Warner Home Video. It was released September 22nd, 1998 on VHS. And yeah, y'all remember, uh, like I said, direct to video. Anyway, I've talked about everything, okay. Now I'll go ahead and talk about the plot of the movie. It's one of minutes, okay. Sorry guys, now I made my reviews a little too long, but I can't help it, that's just me. Hey, it's my channel. I can make it as long as I want to. <laughs> anyway, so pretty much this time, Scooby Doo on Zombie and Island on Zomb Scooby Doo on Zombie Island is basically about that the gang like they um you know they kind of break up. Daphne has like her own show, and you know Fred is Fred is her cameraman. Pretty much like some years later, they you know they the team kind of broke up and. Because, you know, Daphne got tired of guys wearing masks. So she basically wants to film a real haunted house that's really got ghosts in it. Or zombies in it, whatever. Something like that. And, and you know, Velma owns her own, you know, uh, mystery bookstore. And Shaggy and Scooby kind of have odd jobs. They they work as security guards in the airport, but they're stealing food and eating it. <laughs> and pretty much, you know... Until Fred comes up over the idea for the gang to meet, you know, they can, you know, meet each other again for Daphne's birthday. And then they decide to go for, you know, the real, go search for a real haunted house. Of course, it's tricks and stuff. These guys are playing tricks on them. And uh, they don't like that, you know. Daphne is, you know, just tired of that. And until they meet this girl named Lena, who offers to take them to, you know, you know, Simone Lamont, Simone Lamont's house, who, uh, her house is really haunted by it was about by a pirate named Moonscar named Moonscar who was about two hundred years ago came to the island and died and now they believe there are ghosts on there so Daphne wants to film it but there's a bit of a mystery going on and then the mystery in itself have to find out what's going on there's some suspicious things going on and there will be some spoilers in this review yes I'll put that if you've never seen Scooby Doo on Zombie Island turn this video off right now and go watch it or buy it on DVD. Look for it on DVD somewhere because our VHS. If you got it, if you still got VHS, get it on VHS because uh, some there are going to be some spoilers in here. You know. Basically, so it opens with them, you know, solving the moat, the the case of the moat monster. Because they go their separate ways because they're, you know, bored with solving mysteries, which, alright, I guess at this point, you know, they've been doing it for so long, I guess, you know, it's just seeing guys in masks all the time probably for them just, you know, got boring. Pretty much her show is called Coast to Coast with Daphne Blake. And I did mention a bit of the plot, you know, at first, but, you know, like I said, with, with Fred and Daphne is doing now, and, you know, with, I've, I've already said what they're doing, but anyway, like I said, the gang meet up for her birthday. I like it though, <laughs> Scoob and Shaggy are at the restaurant, like, come on, Scoob, your nose is growing bad. Like, we miss you too, Daphne. <laughs> and they get all the food in there, it's like, you, what, you ate all the food? Oh, boss, it was good. Y'all fired. And he's like, it's so funny that they said, man, we're going to starve Scooby Doo. We're going to starve. <laughs> oh, hey, Fred. And then he calls Velma, too. And they basically decide to go find a real mystery, you know. And they go to New Orleans. They basically go to New Orleans, and then you see a clip, you know, you see, you know, the. I think it's the song uh, "The Ghost Is Here." I'm not sure. 
uh, but it's a pretty good song, you know, what's going on, they're solving mysteries, you know, Daphne's trying to get, you know, Fred, to, you know, the real thing to make it real ghost, but apparently it keeps on being guys a mask over and over again, you know, Daphne's tired of this shit, you know, she tell she is, and she wants a real ghost story, you know, but they keep giving guys a mask and they keep on talking about it until this woman named Lena basically says, I know a haunted house. I'm sorry I was listening, but I, well, I live in a, you know, Louisiana Bayou where my employer, Miss Le- Simone LeBron, you know, she basically, you know, owns this land that is haunted by ghosts, by real ghosts. And so they offer to take over Scooby Doo and are eating snacks. You know, they get this big old sandwich of hot peppers, which are the hottest peppers in New Orleans or Louisiana or whatever. And, you know, Shaggy's about to eat his, but Scooby sucks up in half of his food. He's like, well, man, that didn't taste so bad. And Scooby's like, <laughs> you know, what am I doing that for? Right here. Right here. You know, I can't do a Scooby Doo voice, y'all. I'm sorry. You're probably going to push dislike on this video because of my shitty Scooby Doo voice. Sorry. And it's hunted by Morgan Moonscar. And pretty much Fred has taken a liking to her, pretty much. Then they go on the boat to meet a guy, to meet a guy named uh, Jacques, who is the owner of this ferry, and he drives them there. They... I forget this. Snake bike Scruggs, you yeah. know. He has a hunting pig named Mojo, and pretty much Scooby-Doo... He's trying to grab this catfish, and he falls in the water. They're about to get eaten by alligators or crocodiles or whatever. And then, you know, the snake bite saves him and basically tells him to get off his boat. And he's just, he's just a mean bastard, you can call him. <laughs> you know, and he said, yeah, he thinks he owns a lake. He don't like anybody. You know, Josh got that voice. He's like, oh, people come out to buy you. They don't like it. They don't survive. So Dev is like, oh, okay. <laughs> And they go meet, you know, well, you know, first thing is like, oh my god, you have a dog? And she was like, dog? Where? <laughs> and she's like, well, she has cats. Scooby is great with cats. <laughs> and what happens is they arrive on the, uh, on, um, Simone's Island, and, you know, Scooby sees the cats. Crack, cat, rats? He sees them and then he goes chases the cats. He's messing up the the gardener's name is uh, whatever the gardener's name was. Let me see. Bayou. And Daphne kind of finds him, you know, to be cute, you know. But they um Scooby and Shaggy. Sorry. Well, anyway, Scooby's chasing the cats all over the place. He's chasing them. He can't get them and. And Lena's like, great with cats, huh? And then Shaggy's like, Scooby Doo, stop! <laughs> Basically, he's holding back and he bumps into Miss Simone. He's like, oh, what is this cat doing here? It's irritating me. You know, I don't sound like she's a man, but she's not. <laughs> she basically, you know, says, yes. You know, you woke, you know, they meet her, they said that you got, you got real ghost here, can we film it? And she said, yeah, I'm flattered, you know. It takes them in their in her house, and they kind of you know see around the house a bit. Scooby and Shaggy are in the kitchen, of course, like always, because obviously we got to mention they are both cowards, but they love to eat food. That's their favorite thing. You know, Scooby's good, good when he when he has something to eat. They eat hot peppers, and they're you know eating so much they're both drinking water. Scooby's drinking a gallon of water. You know this you know this water, and then he breaks the glass. But then you know Shaggy's got this big water. Jug, this huge water jug, he's dragging all of it on him. Well, you drink a big water jug like that, like that Shaggy has, you probably go into the bathroom about a dozen times. And they say, guys, you okay? Oh, we're okay. We just, you know, we just ate some hot peppers. And Mr. Simone says, yep, I told you those were the hottest peppers. And meanwhile, pretty much what happens is why they're, you know, looking for more food. Pretty much a ghost right to get out. And they get scared. And like, roast, roast. You know, Shaggy, Scooby says, and Dev's like, okay, let's film it. You know, fixes her hair up a bit. And Simone comes sit next to me, please. And she says something, and then this wind blows, like, and says, beware. Later, Velma is able to, you know, she has like a spoon, uh, 
like a spoon or something and carves the wall a bit and it says Maelstrom on it which is the name of Morgan Moonstar's ship and everything in that you know and pretty much Velma like she flies up like there's no you know string holding them up or a magnet she's basically just flying up until she's let go you know which is a mystery you know Although they're trying to prove that these ghosts are fake. Pretty much what happens is Shaggy and Scooby, I guess later on, are forgetting, you know, they they try to go, yeah, yeah. well, Scooby go chase some more cats, and then pretty much runs into Snake Bite again, and Mojo, he sends Mojo to pay Mojo to chase him down, and they fall in this hole where this zombie comes to life, and it's the, the, the zombie, the ghost of uh, Morgan Moonscar chasing them, and they get scared, of course. And the time that they come back, he's not around, because they run into the gardener, and I forgot to mention, they do find the gardener suspicious, you know, finding out what he's trying to plant, or what he's doing. You know, Velma, you know, he basically becomes their first suspect. And then Shaggy sees this colonel in the mirror who is a ghost, you know. And then Simone tells him that it was the headquarters for a confident regiment during the American Civil War, so people in the Civil War would go to the house and hide. Just like you found out later in the house, there's like a under, you know, under like a, like a hole underneath the house where they can go and hide. Basically for, you know, due to her cats being around, Scooby can't handle it. He just does not like these cats, so they eat. They go and eat on the um, eating card, and the cats, you know, are kind of like rubbing up on the core. And they decide to take off the cats. They don't get hurt too bad, but they fall off the car. Scooby, you know, st you know, sticks his tongues out at them. You know, and then they go to eat somewhere, basically more properly, where they're not annoyed by the cats. And then pretty much they, you know, they eat the, you know, they eat the spicy food. It gets too hot that they go in the lake to just water it down. And then as they're in the water, all these zombies start coming to life. And Scooby's like, ah, you know, go for a run. Basically, you'll run away. And then they split up to find Scooby and Shaggy. You know, Scooby and Shaggy are, you know, again, all the run. You got, it's terror time again. You know it's all be true to be. I can't remember most of the song, but it's terror time again. I played the song though, but I don't want to get a copyright claim. And Fred and Death eventually do find the mystery, but no Scooby and Shaggy. So pretty much, well, Shaggy and Scooby show up a little later when the zombie attacks her, and you know they're trying to take off the mask, and Fred's trying to take it off, but he ends up ripping the head off, and the zombie puts his head back on, and then they're like, "Oh, run!" And then you get the song playing again. And then Scooby and Shaggy run into this cave where they find out it's wax dolls of Fred, Daphne, and Velma, and they kind of play with it. And that's when you know you realize somebody's got voodoo dolls in them, and pretty much somebody like you know when Fred and uh, when Scooby and Duchet are playing with it, one of them like slap Daphne's hand, Daphne like slaps Fred and then kicks him. Which I thought was funny. <laughs> you have some kicking and punching, but then they drop it down just because more ghosts are co zombies are coming. So Scooby and Duchet get freaked out and drop the voodoo dolls and they fall on the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a nest of bats that chasing them, yeah. And then pretty much they hear Lena screaming, so they decide to go back to the house. And they... It's pretty much the secret chamber, which uh, the Civil War, you know, people in the war that would go hide under or something like that. 
And Lena says, Oh, ah! you know, freaked out over here. You know, they took the zombies. They kidnapped Simone and they took her, you know, over here. And then Daphne, you know, not Daphne, excuse me, Vilma. The smart one, I said. You know, the Vilma's, you know, investigating, you know, sexual clues. Like, what? No. You know, Velma is suspicious because you basically, you don't see any parts of Dragon. You just see, she sees Simone's footprints, but basically Simone, like she was walking down there, not, you know, being dragged. If she was being dragged, then you would see zombie feet everywhere and probably Simone's body, you know, you know, dirt and stuff being dragged. You would see dirt on the ground, like, all everywhere, but since so she's seeing the her footprints, Velma would definitely becomes suspicious, you know. Pretty much, and they find out, wait, there's nothing wrong here, and then they come to the, like, it's like this, it's like this car, this, sorry, 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 clock, excuse me, that's like a clock of a cat, and like this, you know, they, it's like this, this hatch opens of the, of the moon, and pretty much what happens is, you, f and then, you know, and then, you know, she, like, how is this, you know, how is this to be, and then, what's going on here? And Velma's like, well, we asked Lena. Because I just found out that she didn't be in drag here. She walked down here. And then, spoiler alert, you find out Lena and Simone are the main antagonists of this film. And they said, oh, how about you are, Velma? So they, you know, use the voodoo dolls to put them down. And then you find out. They're pretty much, you know cat creatures. They turn to their their cat creatures, which I'll explain. And then they you turn to the cat creatures and, you know, are able to tie them up. And basically, um you know, cat creatures. And basically they tell them that centuries ago, about two hundred years ago, because they're they've lived about two hundred years, so they're pretty much immortal. It's because of their cat creature abilities, which I'll get to, that they've been Lena usually sort of they were victims to their house and then they trap them and you know basically suck their life force out of them and that's how they live you know but anyway it was centuries ago they are pretty much part of a group of settlers that were a group of settlers excuse me that were you know worship a, a cat god and pretty much, Moonscar and his pirates pretty much showed up and forced all the settlers, you know, except Lena and uh, Simone, basically to their deaths, to their minds by putting them in the water and then the crocodile, well, alligators eat them. And so they sort of avenged them by the cat guy by pretty much becoming immortal. They become cat creatures and they go kill Moonscar and his men while they're searching for treasure. And over the years, you know, more settlers would come. They pretty much decided to curse, the, you know, curse Moon Scar, but they didn't know that pretty much they ended up on a curse as well, so. But, uh, pretty much their curse, I forgot to say, you know, their wish came true, they got to kill and get revenge of Moon Scar, but permanent, they become cat creatures permanently, which means they have to be it they that means they'll be it forever probably. And they must train life forces to preserve their their immortality. Uh then uh Jock, pretty much the boat driver, is also one of the is also a cat creature. Because he, prom he wanted immortality, so they promised to give that to him. And he would help lower victims there to the island. I like it when you meet, you know, Skimmy Shaggy, you know, they're running from the zombies. They come up against him. You know, because they got, again, they get Fred and Daphne and Velma and Bayou were tied up. Skimmy and Shaggy are still running from the um, zombies. They run to Jacques and Jacques. Like, Where are y'all going? <laughs> and then he becomes the mon you know, this big crack cat creature. And then he, you know, the devil was strong enough to pick him up, and then they chase his scabby and shoot, scabby and shoot me, scabby, shaggy and scooby. <laughs> and then the zombies are pretty much, you know, helping them out. You realize the zombies are the good guys. 
you know, like Daphne says, the zombies are there to actually warn them to, you know, get away, to not suffer their same fate. And other people who were on the island a long time ago, you know, the zombies are basically trying to warn them to get out, you know, to, you know, be safe. Shaggy and Scooby eventually end up in the cave. They run into Simone and Lena, and Simone's like, I'm tired of that dog, and they're about to try to kill Shaggy and Scooby. They basically do almost train the life out of them. Uh, but somebody eventually... They create voodoo to Simone and Lena, basically, to stop their ritual. And pretty much said they're... You know, that 12 a.m. clock is Cat, cat clock is about to hit, and so pretty much, you know, they're about to get, um, about to, you know, eventually try to kill them. But pretty much, Simone, Lena, and Jog, you know, pretty much end up being too late. And film is like, you're not allowed to up. And they pretty much their bodies disintegrate, and you see them turn skeletons, and they eventually, you know, die. And then the zombies eventually they go back to their resting places. They been avenged, so they get to rest in peace. And pretty much at the end, uh, you find out that Bu is an undercover police officer. So, you know, he was did investigating the disappearances. That's why he was digging a hole to see about it. So you find out that you know he's a police officer. And Davin asks, "Well, do you want to be on TV?" And they you know talk about the story. Pretty much, then they decide to leave the Bayou and uh, Scooby. Yeah, you know, the cast come to you know Scooby in a funny way ends up on the boat. You know. Rolling around on the boat, and pretty much the thing is going to eat some food, but then the cat, or Simone's cats, come by and see if Scooby share some food with them. Like, uh oh. And then, then you got the ending song. Pretty much they go back to town at the end, but then you got the post credit scene where Scooby, you know, feeds the cats milk, and he's like, Scooby Dooby Doo! And that's pretty much the end of the movie. I hope I explained it pretty well to you guys. I'm sorry to look up on Wikipedia, guys, but again, I have you know a habit of forgetting things. But like I said, the movie, you know, the spoiler alert, you know, about Lena and uh, Scar uh, uh, and Simone that they are cat creatures, and eventually, you know, like I said, spoiler alert, you know, I should have mentioned that before. That about them, you know, draining life out of victims and stuff, which you find out, which I've already explained. So again, a big spoiler alert there for you. So I'm gonna put that in the description below. But anyway, guys, um, my final th thought is uh, I love Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. I would not recommend it for children. You know, parents, if you parents watch this movie with your kids, so they won't be freaked out. Uh, but definitely, it's a very good movie. It's definitely a very entertaining film. Uh, it's a very fun movie. I did like it. There's good humor in it. And I like the darker tone of it. It is more interesting. I don't like voodoo dolls and stuff, but, you know, voodoo dolls I don't like. You know, that kind of stuff that, you know, that's one problem I had. I just didn't like the voodoo dolls. That's only one issue I had. But other than that, I did love and enjoy this movie. It's a very good movie. Uh, like I said, it's got a darker tone to it, so can be a bit scary. But uh, it's a pretty entertaining movie. Scooby and Shaggy are funny. You... The voice acting is great by everybody, and the villains, you know, the ending is pretty good, you know. So, you know, like I said, some spoilers there. So pretty much, like, if you, if you have not seen this movie, again, I'm going to say turn off the review. Don't even bother to watch it, you know. You've been warned. Get out. Beware. You know. But anyway, yes, my rating for Scooby Doo was on my own is 4 to 5 stars. Again, because I don't like the, the the voodoo dolls. I don't like that kind of stuff. But four to five stars and one thumbs up for it. And uh, a Scooby snack, but I don't have one apparently at this moment. But, yeah. But definitely check out Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. I will also be reviewing uh, Scooby-Doo 2002. The Scooby-Doo live action film, which came out in 2002. And Scooby-Doo 2 and Monsters Unleashed. Monsters Unleashed, excuse me. But Scooby Doo is on my island. Very fun movie. If you've never seen it before, I recommend seeing it. Like I said, turn off this review. As soon as I, as soon as you start watching this video, just turn it off. 
because I don't, you know, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it for you. There are spoilers, you know, I keep saying that again. But anyway, my rating for the film, four to five stars, great movie, love Scooby Doo on Simon Allen. See it if you, if you haven't seen the movie, check it out, you know, please, see it. You know, if you're a Scooby Doo fan, if you if you grew up with Scooby Doo like I did, you watched it as a kid, if you've never seen this movie before, definitely check it out. But Scooby Doo on Simon Allen, very fun movie. Definitely recommend it. Okay. So, hope you uh, see this movie, and uh, I hope you enjoy it like I do, and uh, definitely check out Scooby Doo on Allen, guys. Alright, uh, let me show you my next movie that I'm going to review. Hmm. But, um, this movie I'm going to, Scooby Doo on Allen, I'm going to add on to uh, animated reviews. So anyway, but uh, next I'm going to review another Keanu Reeves film that came out uh, about three years ago now, I think. Uh, pretty much this is a movie that he came out with recently. Well, he didn't come out with it. I'm sorry, three years ago, but it did get a sequel not too long ago. I saw the sequel, and I'm going to review the first one here, and that is a movie called John Wick. Yeah. Which is an awesome movie. Maybe better, better like this. Yeah. John Wick, which probably was my favorite movie of 2014. I know when I gave my favorite movies of 2014 list or whatever, I said Amazing Spider-Man 2 was, but now I changed my mind. This film was actually my favorite film of 2014. And when I review it tomorrow, you will see why. But, yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to review John Wick tomorrow. I can't wait to see this movie again. Can't wait to rewatch it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um... Hope you enjoyed my review of Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. Uh, let me know, guys, what do you think of this movie? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, what's your opinion on Scooby Doo on Zombie Island? Do you love Scooby Doo? Do you watch any of the TV shows or the other movies? Maybe when I, you know, come across the um, more director video movies, like I said, this is director video. So basically, it should be on DVD some places, I guess. I don't know where, but or on Amazon, basically, I would say buy it from if you want. But, um,. I'd recommend checking out some of more Scooby Doo animated movies. Uh, if I do the review the next one, that'll be on uh, Scooby Doo and Witch's Ghost. I'm not saying I'm going to, but when I come across Scooby Doo animated movies, like again, I go by the years. So when I go, you know, I'll continue reviewing Scooby Doo animated movies randomly, I guess. So anyway, that guys, thanks for watching my review of Scooby Doo on the Island. Um, like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in my review of John Wick. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye. Scooby Doo Doo Doo! Okay, that's out. Sheesh! It's scary! <laughs> bye bye, guys.